Awesome. So what are some perceptions of natural diamonds versus lab-grown diamonds around the world? So I think around the world is kind of interesting. As we always know, U.S. always lead the trend. So U.S. so far from the last three years has grown from penetration rate in terms of natural diamonds versus lab-grown. Lab-grown have gone from like low double digit to up to like 60, 70% now. Wow. In the last three years. That's how crazy the market is. Um, for Hong Kong, it roughly goes from high single digit last year to now I estimate around 20-ish to 30%. Really? Okay. In a year, yes. Um, some of the lowest adoption rate is Japan. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? Yeah. Um, they has been always a very branded uh, and kind of conservative society. So, But we're seeing a bit of volume picking up from some of the natural dealers who's trying to start ramping up that business. Um, Europe has been trailing. I think it's somewhere between Hong Kong and US, same for Australia. Um, we're also seeing a lot of pickup in terms of Southeast Asia. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting where globally everyone's trying to perceive lab growth versus natural. As I said, we're very, very early on. I mean, lab grown is not new. Lab has been around for a long time and people or natural sellers have always portrayed lab grown as fake. But as the FTCs in the US have classified lab grown as real diamonds, um, I think the global <laughs> perception has been always in line and more and more people are accepting lab grown. And I mean, they, some, a lot of customers are not willing to pay 10 times the price for something looking exactly the same. So we're seeing a lot more adoption globally, and it has been a very fast market um, in terms of penetration rate and how fast it grows. Wow, I mean, to be honest with you, like I'm very surprised like Hong Kong is that high. Um, but actually, so we, we talked a bit about like the, the, the trend of, you know, what's happening in, you know, US and Asia, but what are like the purchasing differences uh, of like, you know, the average buyer in, in Japan versus an average buyer in Hong Kong versus an average buyer in mainland China? Like, what are you, what are you seeing? So let's talk about US because the US makes up 90% of the market. Okay. Um, and interesting enough, during the Christmas season, they basically have dried up the whole global supply of two to four carats. Wow. It's Christmas time. Um, I mean, U.S. tends to have this more outgoing and bling bling culture, which they don't mind telling people that they're wearing lab grown and they're proud to be wearing lab grown. And they think if I'm buying lab grown, why not like a three carat, a four carat? So during Christmas time, like from like end of November all the way up to like Valentine's Day, when you're buying from the market two carat to four carats, especially rounds, they're completely out of market. You have your Valentine's, wow. you have you have um, your Christmas, everyone's just like on big purchase. Uh, that's how crazy you guys are. In terms of um, Hong Kong, um, I think people are still a bit behind the curve um, and they tend to concentrate mainly around one and a half to two and a half segment. Um, the reason being is Hong Kong is a very wealthy society and a lot of people could afford a two carat natural rate. Mm -hmm. And therefore the general perception is more like, I'm getting something not so out of line that I guess suspect, suspected as a lab grown and mm. I don't tell unless I was being asked, but I still get away with being the perception of wearing like a legit natural mm. ring. Uh, with China, um, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, China, it's so varied. Um, but obviously, like most economy, your one carrot always sells the best, your largest carrot, like 10 carrots, 20 carrots are the least, mm. but you still have a very affluent class in China who are willing to spend like millions just to get like 10, 20 carrots, 30 carrots, right? Um, and hence, I think China is more difficult to pinpoint. But I think most or every single society market out there, definitely your one carrot always be best selling because one mm. carrot is easy to carry. Um, like the first studs a, a lady get was probably like a round one carat studs. So those always sells the easiest and the best, right? Mm. Um, in terms of different markets, um, I think with Japan, they all like to have a more cute and dainty design. So they tend to have like very small star melee design, less than one carat, and they're still very slowly adapted. One thing you mentioned there, so just out of curiosity, you, you mentioned that the U 